Hello everybody and welcome to our second webinar in our series on SIFT. We were going to talk about visualise and ratios today, but we decided to break it down and just talk about visualise as there's so much to cover and we can cover it in detail. And then we can move on to ratios alongside benchmarking, tax and valuation next week. So the real benefit of SIFT, as I mentioned last week, is that it gives you the ability to really see what your data means in terms of performance of your business and the ease with which you can do that. So I'll firstly hand over to Abby, who's going to talk you through the first few aspects of Visualize. Thanks, Tom. As touched on in last week's webinar, the aim of the Visualize section is to help you, as a small business owner, run your business better by having access to a variety of different ways of looking at your business performance and finding the reports in SIFT that work best for you. The idea is that once you've had a look around the Visualize section, you will quickly identify which reports you like and which reports you find the most easy to understand. For example, the overview tab, you can look at your current income and expenses position looking back to the last 12 months. When we get onto the budgeting and forecast and webinar, this information will be particularly useful as you can use it as a starting point to start forecasting your next 12 month sales or expenses predictions. The next section you've got in SIFT is your customer reports. Amy touched on this in detail last week, so she's just going to recap what you need to know. So first thing, I'm going to talk about why we should monitor sales. So obviously you want to know how much money is coming in. And once you know this, you'll then be able to manage your spending to ensure that you make a profit. Um, it enables you to make judgments on your marketing strategies. It can also highlight what service or product is preferred, giving you an insight to your client's preference. Um, overall, this will improve your performance and can open up opportunities. So the customer features, the tab along the top shows sales, accounts receivables, debtors, days outstanding, new customers, active customers and retention. The advantage to this is the visual representation. There's multiple graph types and colour coding and there's comparisons with previous years so it's easier to spot trends and anomalies. It's easy to understand because there's summaries provided, so if you're not an accountant, it quite clearly says it underneath. Um, value amounts and percentages are also provided. The sales tab, if you see in the top left hand corner, there's a little function that allows you to adjust the period of the graph. You can choose to view this monthly, quarterly, annually or a custom range. On the other side you can see that there's an actual versus prior. So if you decide you can compare monthly and along the side you can see that there's two different colors so it color codes which period um, also at the bottom you can see a summary and this summary highlights the top customers and their percentage of your sales compared to the prior period i'm now going to move on to the accounts receivables tab so accounts receivable is the money that's owed to your business and this is vital for cash flow purposes by monitoring this you may be able to see some inefficiencies within your current process. This may also allow you to negotiate shorter payment terms with your client. Along the top, you can see that there is a breakdown in days. Um, and on the bottom, there's a percentage of clients overdue. So you can see that the majority are 120 days overdue. Um, along the right hand side, you can also see a percentage per client. So analog limited would need more time chasing than Jack Van Tromp. If all of that was a little bit busy for you, they also do further breakdowns. So the debtor graph shows each customer and how much they owe quite clearly. The days outstanding clearly establish periods of overdue invoices. So as you can see that the majority of the invoices are 120 days overdue. So this would suggest a lack in credit control process. I can't show you on here, but on the actual app, if you hover over it, it gives you the monetary amounts as well. Um, new customers, if you want to track how many new customers you're getting, you can see it here where it's additional per month or you can see at the bottom the total amount of customers. Active customers, this shows the amount invoiced per month compared to the prior period. As you can see, July and September have particularly high invoices. If your work is seasonal, it might explain this, however, if it's not, you then might want to go back and check what you did in the months and see if you can implement it throughout the year. Retention, this is the last tab. So retention refers to the ability of a company to retain its customers over a specified period. 
ideally for cash flow purposes you'd want to aim for as high as possible and for some of these lower periods you might consider whether there's any clients in there that you could invoice monthly rather than quarterly. The next area of Visualize is all about your suppliers. If you're keen to keep track of your outgoings sorted by supplier then looking at a purchases report would be useful for you. This will allow you to compare your costs on a monthly, quarterly or annual basis and identify how your costs have changed compared to the previous period. If you like to keep track of how much you're spending with a certain supplier, you'll be able to find that information from this report. Moving over to the next slide, if you want to keep track of what money you owe to your suppliers, then looking at your accounts payable report will give you that information. The report will look similar to this and will tell you which supplier you owe the most to at the top. If your business is, uses a high volume of different suppliers and you struggle to keep an eye on everything you owe, you can filter the report by top 50 or top 100. The report will tell you which supplier bills have been outstanding the longest so you can quickly address the suppliers that need paying first. If you've been struggling to pay your suppliers on time, then working from this report might make your life much easier going forward. The next slide shows you two more ways that you can keep an eye on your creditor balances. If you're not keen on the accounts payable report, then you might like looking at these reports instead. They effectively create a picture of the amount you owe to your suppliers. Paying your suppliers will be one of your business's key cash outgoings, so using SIF to find a report you like to use will make it much easier for you to keep on top of your bills to ensure that you can keep paying everyone in a timely manner. The next section we're going to look at is operations and the operations is all to do with your business income and its cost of sales and expenses. So for these types of reports you can break them down into either months, quarters or you can look at the annual figures. The sales operation function is particularly useful if you have more than one type of sales income. You're able to see how well each source of income is doing compared to one another and as a percentage of total income. It also compares to your previous period so you can identify if revenue streams remain constant or if there are fluctuations and this could lead into some further research if you want to find out why there are fluctuations. So again with the expenses report on the next slide it does exactly the same for your business expenses. You can run one of these reports for your cost of sales figures as well. These reports will be useful when trying to plan your cash flow going forwards. You can address what expenses you have to pay that will remain constant for each month and in fact are those in and you can also address if there's any significant expenditure in a particular period if, if you expect this to be a repeat in the following period, for example, if your insurance costs renew in December. So then moving on to items, the graph shown here gives a breakdown of the top item categories by sales. The items section of Visualize will be of significant use to you if you use products and services within your accounting package, as it will pull through data such as the top selling items, the top item categories, as well as the choice option to use inventory management. As we can see in the graph shown here, it will show you what percentage of total sales are made up from the top item categories. When you run a top items report, it will give you the same feature just with further analysis into individual products rather into the, the categories that the products are in. Inventory management will be used if you have any products that are stock items. So running a report on SIF will give you data such as the average sales in a month, the maximum sales in a month, all across a three month period, and expected time until the stock runs out. I'll pass you over to Amy now. So I'm going to talk about the last two tabs under Visualize, and this is Transaction List and Management Accounts. So for Transaction List, you can adjust the period to view it monthly, quarterly, annually, or a custom range. And this is quite similar to QuickBooks charts of accounts. However, what's quite good with SIFT is that you can type in expenses and group them together. So the example that I've used is staff expenses, and it includes home working allowance, uh, staff insurance, travel and subsistence and phone costs. So when you run the report, it shows you just then ones that you've searched. If you then click on the little blue arrow next to staff expenses, it will then show you a breakdown of what this consists of. So I'm now going to move on to management accounts. Management accounts are a set of summarised accounting data. This is prepared on a regular basis specifically for the use of management. The summarised data includes profit and loss report, balance sheet report, working capital and earning before interest, taxes and amortisation. The purpose of this is to provide timely information that will help management make better decisions. This will then give them better control over the business. 
Firstly, I'm going to talk about the profit and loss. What's particularly good with this is that it gives you the option to run a detailed version or a summary. So the detailed version will include everything that's under that category. What's also quite good is that it's got the add custom layout function. So if you were to click on the hyperlink and type in accountancy and legal fees, when you run the report, this would come up as one group. You can also save this view, so next time you come in to the profit and loss and you just want to see the professional fees, this will already be done for you. What's also quite good is that it has a year-to-date figure on the right-hand side. So this is quite an easy way just to quickly see how much income and expenditure has been incurred in the financial year so far. Um, they also have a variance tab, so this clearly shows the variance between the prior period. And the arrows allow you to see this variance without actually having to read the figures. I'm now going to talk about the multi-period profit and loss. And in the example I've used, this is a quarterly report. You can clearly see the different quarters in the top row. Um, this makes it so much easier to compare the data. If we look at the data itself, we can see that the cost of sales were particularly high in the quarter ending the 31st of October 2019. Um, with the detailed summary, you can clearly see that this is due to stock shrinkage. What's also quite good is that if you're a visual person, along the right hand side there's a trend column. Within this column you can see a graph format for each category within the profit and loss. So for example, net profit and loss before tax, you can see that the first two quarters they were making a loss, however the second two this is increased to them making a profit. The balance sheet report that I've run shows the current period compared to the prior period. This also has a variance column and a variance percentage column, so you can look at whichever one you prefer. If we look at some of the variances, we can see that for trade debtors, this has decreased. This might be because you've implemented a credit control process, so you know it's working. Um, if you have a look, there's debtors euro, you can see that there's no variance for this. Um, so you'd know that this needs chasing. The same applies for creditors, so this hasn't decreased, so you can have a look into why this hasn't been paid. I'm now going to talk about the working capital tab. So working capital is the capital of the business which is used in its day-to-day -day trading operations. This is calculated as current assets minus the current liabilities. What's particularly useful about this report is that it colour codes the variance. So it's colour coded green and red. You can then focus on the red as you know this is a negative impact. Um, what's also quite useful is that it has ratio analysis along the bottom. So it shows you the current ratio, which is your ability to pay off short term debt. And it also shows you the quick ratio. And this only includes the most liquid items such as cash. Um, when we come on to ratio analysis, you'll be able to see more about this. Lastly, I'm going to talk about the earnings before interest, tax and amortisation. This is a measure of the company's profitability used by investors and this can be a more accurate view of the company's performance. As you can see, this also has a variance column, a variance percentage column and a year to date column. Um, it may be good to base your company's KPIs on these results as they do not include things that you cannot control such as tax rates. This may be particularly useful for hitting targets and motivating your employees as well. So that brings us to the end of the presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them now. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe, leave a comment down below. You can also find us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and quite recently, TikTok. And we'll see you next time. Stay safe.